Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. And now your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in San Francisco. This is theCUBE's special new innovation, the director set live on the Moscone North Lobby, VMworld 2015. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. We're excited to be here, have a candid conversation with Cheryl Chamberlain and Paul Strong with Capgemini. Uh, welcome to theCUBE, our new director set, our new innovation, welcome. Thank you, welcome. I didn't know you worked for Capgemini. I guess oh, we have to I figure have that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. VMware. Sorry, VMware. That's fine. You're I'm with Capgemini. I'm with Capgemini. I feel included. <laughs> it's, it's good. good. Capgemini, EMC, VMware, all one big happy family. <laughs> um, so welcome, welcome to, to the director set. So talk about the uh, program you guys are running. I want to hear more about the uh, VM uh, leadership. VM women, yes. yes. So really this is about driving inclusivity inside VMware. Um, in the office of the CTO, one of the main, you know, main responsibilities for the business to some degree is around driving things like innovation. Uh, there's a lot of data to show that innovation is actually the outcome of the interplay and riffing of ideas of people from various diverse backgrounds, diverse experiences, and everything else. So from certainly my personal perspective and VMware's perspective, we need to include that diversity within the workforce. And mm -hmm. the clearest group that is actually tends to be poorly represented is actually women. So our first initiative really is, is called VM Women, and it's really around raising awareness and helping us as a business do better in, in being inclusive. Yeah, and we need more virtual women, right? We got to right. have that, that tech representation. Cheryl, you've been doing a lot of work in the trends. We know we've seen each other for many, many years. Yes. Where does it come from? Where is it now and where has it been? Certainly it's a lot more mainstream in terms of the coverage, gender diversity, and diversity in general and women obviously in leadership, not just in tech, STEM, et cetera. What, what's the state of the conversation? Yeah, so I would think that it's changed now to be more about advocacy, male advocacy, as opposed to women's leadership or women working by themselves to be more visible and to have a, have a seat at the table. But when it's advocacy, we're actually working together to drive change and innovation in our organizations. Yep. And honestly, that's always where I've been sitting on it, uh, or the point of view that I've been sitting on this with. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, director's chair and the innovative yeah, director right. said here, Paul, talk about this advocacy, because this is really a big deal. We're going to be at the Grace Hopper event, formerly with the whole Cube. This year, last year, we did a kind of a drive-by when Satya Nadella kind of stepped on himself when he was talking about, and there was a big brouhaha around that. But then that opened up the conversation. Yeah. VMware is a very inclusive work environment, and if anyone's been to the campus knows, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. So the company culture is certainly about you know, workplace, comfort, and talk about the diversity projects, and then the yeah. role of, of the women and the diversity in tech. So I, I think the, if I think about our, our corporate culture, I mean, clearly from, from a technology perspective, we actually do a pretty good job of hiring in based on the diversity that's mm -hmm. in the broader community. I, I would make a point that I actually believe that that diversity from the get-go is, is poor. Uh, computer science is one of the few places where the number of graduates of women is actually decreasing, I believe, still. Uh, and so we need to do better things there. But when we're in the workforce, obviously we want to be in a place where um, everyone is give, given equal access to opportunity. It's not just uh, with regards to promotion per se, it's having the opportunities to actually demonstrate the capabilities. And some of that historically has been, I think, um, it tends to have been cornered into the male side of things just because we have a different way of networking and engaging. And I think so, one of my big ahas, at least in participation in this program at VMware, is really looking at how we become aware of many of these unconscious things, both the bias side of things yeah. and just unconscious behaviors. And so, you know, thinking about how we move to a world where it's much more about advocacy and being very aware of being inclusive, because providing of the biases. You mentioned biases. Yeah, yeah, and most of them are unconscious. Yeah. I mean, we all do it, and, I, and women do it enough with respect to other women. It's, it's not just a men, woman, yeah. woman, man thing or, or anything else, right? As human beings, we have a habit of taking shortcuts and stereotyping. <laughs> and we have a habit of falling into our own bad habits. And so 
I think as leaders, it's incumbent upon all of us really to make an effort yeah. to be both inclusive and to advocate for the talent that sometimes either is poorly represented or doesn't have a, an appropriate voice. Cheryl, you and I have talked this in the past, and you know my position on this. Obviously, we're obviously doing a lot of profiling of women in leadership, women in tech. Obviously, with two daughters, you know, I, I think about this all the time, and, and I encourage my daughters. But the style differences as one issue. And the other one is about the politically correctness of it. And those are two kind of hot buttons right now. So, I mean, politically correct, I don't want to you know, quote Donald Trump because he's talking about that in elections. It's not about the politically correctness, it's about really the styles and, and, the, and the work environment. Can you share your perspective on that? Because I think there's a lot of people just throw blanket, oh, women in tech, and we check the box. But, Talk about uh, what, what needs to get done. What's your, what do you feel? What are you feeling around in the community? Sure, well, well first of all, I think we need to reach out to the people around us and invite them in so that you create an inclusive discussion. And sometimes you yeah. invite people that don't have a technology background that have a different point of view. Maybe they have a marketing background and you yeah. invite them into an engineering discussion. So they start to get a sense that engineering and technology is not about bits and bytes. Right. It's about thinking yeah, yeah. and thinking about things from a different perspective and giving those points of view to the to the meetings. Yeah. So that's one way to open the doors. You know, I've always said if you did, if you called engineering something else, if you called it yeah. um, something more interesting, you would get a lot more women involved. So we need to yeah. figure out a new name for technology. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then you'll get a lot I more this design. Awesome, I interviewed this great teacher who's doing some cutting edge work in Florida on computer science. And you know, we were joking, you know, having a beer after, after like, oh yeah, what you know, talking about which one ranks, you know, geek, nerd, dork, and these kinds of terms. He goes, none of that applies because he's got football players, cheerleaders, right. everyone's into computer science. This not even, the labeling has become self-referential -refer uh, biasing. So yeah. there's a whole cultural shift yeah. now around what we used to call, hey, you're geeking out. That's, in, in a way, kind of negative. I, I, I think the inclusive team and broadening the conversation is critical. And even as a business, if we forget the, initi the, the, the diversity initiative on, it, on its own, look, if, I, if I look at what we're about as a company in terms of innovation, there's a vast amount of data to show in NSF and elsewhere that this is all around having that diversity. And most of innovation comes from uh, interdisciplinary work. So when you talk about, it's, it's not just about computer scientists, it's about uh, human computer interaction specialists, about organizational psychologists, it's about economists. Everything yeah. that we do with tech inter intersects with the world around us in so many different ways. Yeah. And so creating that inclusive environment for both skill sets, gender, and other yeah. forms of diversity, if we're about innovation, it's absolutely critical that we do it. As well as just from, I mean, That's you mentioned yourself, I have four yeah. daughters, <laughs> and I, you know, when I have conversations with my four daughters, the eldest of whom is 25, and she's a geneticist, so great. Yeah. Great. But it's really, I want to make sure that yeah, that's a great she point. has access to the same opportunities that I have. Paul, that's a great point, because it's computer science, when, when, in the 80s when I got my degree, it was like, you know, very siloed, you coded, and that was very male-oriented, it was mm -hmm. a few women in, in the program, but now, there's so much diversity in the interdisciplinary side yeah. of it, as what you're saying. So, yeah. with the classes out there, like the virtual classes at Stanford, I forget how many thousands of people took, you know, computer yep. science virtually on Stanford. So there's a lot of opportunity to migrate right. between different careers. I and think not be, yeah. I am a woman programmer. Right, or I, I'm I a actually woman, think it's, it's critical, because what, what I think we're seeing is a transition where we worked on core technology capabilities at the, in the dairy weeds, right? We were developing technologies almost for their own sake mm -hmm. and looking for application. We're at a point in time now where technology is embedded with our lives and yeah. businesses in a very profound way. Yeah. You know, in the next 10, 15 years, we'll have it embedded inside our bodies. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. this is, this is yeah, really yeah. about the intersection of the world around you us. You know, I've been in tech all my life since I was a kid, obviously, um, since I was like 16. And, and I got to say, yes, it's been male driven because just the demographics are there. But it's been inclusive. There's a lot of diversity mindset. A lot of people are pretty liberal about you know, inclusive. So I got to ask you guys, what's going on at the event here? Give us some specifics around how do people get involved? What's happening? What's the agenda? Yeah. Where is it? Is there a website? Is there a blog? Is there a Facebook page? Share us some, some details. I'm pretty sure there's a blog site, but for, for sure there's <laughs> it is an I, event. I, I wrote the blog. You wrote the blog? There we yes. go, you see. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's some long URL. <laughs> we're, we're meeting up uh, between 4.30 and 6, yes. I think, tomorrow in the Marriott Marquis, right. in the Golden Gate room. Downstairs. Downstairs. Lower it's, level. It's like two floors Marriott down Marriott yeah. Marquis, tomorrow yeah. at 4.30. 4 30. Downstairs, Golden yep. Gate Ballroom. Yeah. There'll be a talk, there'll be a panel upon which both of us will be, will be serving, and we'll be having this a broader based discussion and sharing experiences. Uh, and again, apart from anything, this is about being inclusive. Um, I, I remember 
misreading an invitation once to a VM Women event and assumed mm -hmm. the men weren't invited. That is absolutely not and never the case. Actually, so we this hope is for everybody. This well, is everyone. Well, actually, absolutely, this is about uh, inclusivity. I actually think that this is even more different. If you are mm. coming and you're a woman, you're to invite a man to go yes. with you. Yeah. So we're trying to get those numbers up so yeah. that it's it's maybe because of the 50, advocacy 50. message you yes, guys want. Absolutely. It's really important. We have to do this yeah. together. If we're yeah. not in the room together having this conversation, then how can we go together to make these changes that are needed? Yeah. I think that's a really good point. This this collaboration is really probably one of the best highlights I've heard because that to me speaks of inclusive. It's not siloing. Yeah. Now there are stuff going on. You're seeing women venture capitalist firms and you know, I'm all for that too. I mean, you know, it, people can pick and choose what they do with their time. Absolutely. As long as they're not offensive, right? You know? right. Um, okay, so give me more details. What else is inspiring you guys around this? Give us some more color uh, inside the companies, uh, feedback. What are some of the stats, momentum? Yeah, just so to me, I'm starting to see a new change in the world because when I write a blog about women's leadership or women's advocate, women leading change, the men are the ones that read my blogs first and they're the ones that are commenting, say I have four daughters, my yeah. wife is very interested in this, and then all of a sudden the women start looking. So I think things are starting to shift in a way that this is our conversation, it's something that we own together on a global level. So we're creating a new community. In okay, Paul and Cheryl, I want you to ask a question for me. Answer a question for me. If you could have a magic wand and go into the younger generation, elementary school, what things would you change? What one or two things would you change? Yeah. Whether it's a mindset, curriculum, um, culture. It's, it's mindset. So I'll, I'll I'll give you an example. My my ten year old daughter, because I have quite a broad range of daughters. <laughs> <laughs> What's your oldest? Uh, Twenty five. Okay. I, I sometimes joke it's family one dot and family two dot <laughs> Littles and bigs. What's the we have? The upgrade too. was expensive. <laughs> yeah. The rest of it. Um, but if I talk to my 10-year-old, she did a, su a summer school uh, last year at one of the university campuses with other 10-year-olds to do computer programming. And one of the boys told her that was not the place that a girl should be. Really? And I'm not saying it's typical. Yeah. But it's clearly, we have an inclusivity thing that needs to be really addressed very early on in life. Um, people may have tendencies, gender may have tendencies towards certain things that, where they are different and that's yeah, just yeah. fine. But there should not be barriers to opportunity and there should not be this presumption yeah. uh, that people have to go down particular tracks. The opportunity should be open to all. It's pretty simple and I think it has to start very early. Sure. But, but even think about the education system. It, when mm. we teach children, we teach them subjects. We don't mm. teach them how to communicate and right. work together and think about each other. So right. if we added some yeah. of these other social elements into the education That's system, a great Actually, yeah. I think we could make a different yeah, world. Yeah, I mean, one of the things going on in Palo Alto, where I live, is social-emotional learning, mm -hmm. where social-emotional learning comes back to both your points, the social and then this mindset, where you don't have to be hardcore and then it takes the judgment out of this kind of implicit, younger, mm -hmm. kind of cultural, I think one of the things is, in the educational system, the inclusivity, but also I think we want to be in a space where people see that, you teach them that the value of teamwork and collaboration, sometimes there's a sense that it's a zero-sum game. Yeah. It's about being competitive and being first, but mm -hmm. actually a rising tide floats all boats. You want people to collaborate together to reach the collective goals and make everyone better. I think the trend is swinging towards more of a broader kind of scorecard, yeah. not the, oh, I think getting A plus is checking all the boxes, but then realizing that they can't, people can't interact well. Right. I mean, especially at Stanford, some of the things that Stanford's doing, we're seeing, uh, it's getting a lot of adoption, is this interdisciplinary concept, yeah. where someone who's an archeologist could come and be a data scientist. Right. So there's a lot of, you don't have to pick your track, no. and I've seen a lot of women go become great computer scientists who didn't go into CS. Right. Who might have vectored in through some other science track. So that's an interesting. No, well, I'm an accountant by training, so I'm, I'm in the tech industry. So you know, you can change your career, you can change yep. what you're doing if you just yeah. believe that you want to go there. As Steve Jobs said, don't live someone else's dogma, live your own path. So his famous speech at Stanford, right. one of my favorites of all time. And I think his point on the value of liberal arts and how it implies, applies yeah. to things with that broader spectrum, yeah. I think is equally 
equally true. Guys, thanks so much. We're going to wrap here. Any final words to plug and give more information on the event, speakers, agenda, uh, so the free and for all, the yeah. panel discussion? Come we'll, and join us. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. 4.30 to 6, Marriott Marquis, Golden Gate Conference Room. VM Women, 4.30, Marriott Marquis. If you're watching, check it out. If you want to attend, it's inclusive. It's open to all. This is theCUBE, live here in San Francisco at the Moscone North Lobby at VMworld 2015. This is John Furrier from theCUBE on the director set here in San Francisco. We'll be right back after this short break.